Okay. Let's start this uh, presentation. So, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Yanis Koliusis. I am an associate professor of uh, logistics and supply chain management here in Cranfield University. And I am also the director of the executive MBA program. Uh, this uh, will be a short presentation over the program, uh, what modules comprise of the program, what is the uh, ethos of the program. Uh, and then once I finish, uh, there will be an opportunity for you to ask any questions that you may have. So feel free to take notes and uh, come back with uh, your questions. Uh, my colleague Helen uh, will be uh, noting down these questions and sharing with uh, the rest of us. So, Cranfield, as you may have seen already, is a unique place. Uh, we have a unique history as a university coming from the technology and the defense and the logistics uh, space. And we are quite uh, proud of uh, this history that we have, uh, which cascades down into how we uh, teach, how we lecture, and how we uh, engage in meaningful discussions throughout the uh, lectures. Uh, the community and the approach uh, that we are having are also unique. Uh, one of uh, our main mottos here is knowledge into action. So all of us want to uh, not only develop and share knowledge and theories and frameworks, but also enable you to use those uh, theories uh, into your real life situations, into your companies that you are working in. And uh, in this uh, sense, uh, go uh, and uh, improve not only uh, your personal standing, but also your professional uh, career. We, are, uh, we also have a unique uh, learning experience that, that we are sharing. So it's not only theory, as I said, uh, it's a mixture of uh, practice-based uh, approaches and uh, elements that we are introducing. So with this in, in mind, uh, we firmly believe that uh, Cranfield and your experience through an executive MBA uh, degree will be a unique experience for you. Now, why our MBA? Why the executive MBA at Cranfield? Uh, we are one of the few uh, universities in the world that is triple accredited. Uh, it's AACSB, AMBA and Equis uh, accredited which makes us part of a rather unique family of 1% of business schools around the world. And at the same time, the Executive MBA uh, features on the Financial Times uh, ranking. Uh, it's one of the most prestigious uh, rankings uh, for MBAs. Uh, and uh, in terms of the ranking, some uh, quick uh, data for that, some quick information on that. We are top 10 in uh, the UK uh, based on the rankings, and we are top three in terms of the aims uh, that we are achieving. So with us, we firmly believe that you will achieve your aims uh, that you are having in mind through your uh, executive MBA experience. We are top five in the UK in terms of work experience. So as you can see later on, the group, the cohort that you uh, will belong to uh, is uh, comprised of practitioners who want to excel and boost their careers, uh, going back to having more meaningful and more in-depth conversations and discussions throughout the modules, throughout the lectures. And something that uh, we are quite proud of, uh, we have a diverse international cohort with a rare, almost equal gender divide, 55-45 uh, male to female ratio, which is one of the very few MBA programs around the world. Uh, in terms of uh, the senior leader apprenticeship, for those of you that are working uh, in the UK and you would like to uh, explore this option, uh, this program is mapped against this standard. And actually, uh, in terms of the Financial Times rankings, we are the only program in the UK that is mapped across the SLA, the Senior Leader Apprenticeship Scheme, and also appears on the Financial Times rankings, uh, making this a unique opportunity for our students. Now, what does the program look like? Uh, should you choose to uh, apply for uh, this program and get admitted. 
Uh, we have two parts for our program. The uh, first part, which is the senior leader apprenticeship uh, program, and the second part, which is the MBA. We are delivering uh, the entire program in partnership with uh, Grant Thornton. Uh, the business services uh, company has helped us uh, develop this program and they are delivering with us among other common activities that we are engaging in with. Uh, the compulsory modes, uh, modules of uh, the first part are 11 and they have thematic assessments uh, in all of them. Uh, there is some asynchronous uh, teaching for some modules, for example, the data analytics modules that we have and the data management modules. And the rest of them are face-to-face uh, -face, uh, residentials that take place every month uh, for three days, uh, usually Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, once you uh, complete this part of your program, you will enter into your executive MBA. Or if you are self-funded, you will be on that pathway from the uh, very beginning. Uh, the executive MBA comprises of uh, two segments. One, uh, the compulsory modules, six in total, and a pathway where you choose a, uh, one of the three, the commercial, the entrepreneurship, and the finance uh, pathway. The uh, program, all in all, is 28 months. 15 months the first part and 13 months the second part. Towards uh, the middle of the second uh, part, you will be doing an international business uh, experience or assignment. We have a couple of options uh, to uh, engage uh, with uh, other overseas uh, companies, cultures, and so on. And uh, you will also get uh, through this part six, six, six coaching sessions with Grant Thornton executive coaches. So uh, you will be uh, working with your GT coach in order to understand where you are and where you want to be and how you will be reaching that goal uh, for your career. Now, in terms of uh, the learnings, in the first part, we uh, have compulsory modules, so uh, general uh, business and management uh, modules like organizational behavior, strategic management, strategic marketing, strategic operations management, and so on and so forth. These, as I said, are all compulsory modules. In the second part, again, the first segment is compulsory modules, more leadership-related modules, so focusing in prop propelling your career, towards a senior leader position within your company uh, or beyond. So in this part, you will be getting modules like challenges for uh, leaders, managing people, uh, managing change, leading with impact within your organization and beyond, disruptive technologies, uh, and so on and so forth. And then you will choose one of the three pathways. The commercial pathway comprises of three modules, organizational resilience, strategizing and challenging context and program and project management. The entrepreneurship pathway comprising of leading and managing the family enterprise, entrepreneurship and new venture creation and entrepreneurial finance. And the finance pathway, which comprises of uh, three modules again, managing international mergers and acquisitions, corporate financial strategy and corporate finance transactions. Now, is this program right for you? The program uh, requires for any applicant to have at least five years post-qualification work experience and also a strong degree and or professional qualifications or a demonstration of high levels of achievements in their uh, professional careers. You will also be required to have, especially those coming from or applying for the senior leader apprenticeship uh, 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 element of the program, uh, you will be asked to have English and uh, math prequalifications. Uh, in terms of uh, what uh, we offer, as I said, we are one of the uh, top 1% worldwide uh, programs uh, in terms of our Triple Crown accreditation. Uh, we have a very, very large network, alumni network, which you can benefit from. 
uh, and we have a number of uh, companies that are working with us to develop their uh, uh, employees and also at the same time work with us to develop new technologies, to develop new theories and improve their uh, operations. Some key statistics. Uh, in the period 2017 to 2021, we have worked with uh, almost 500 leading organizations. And as you can see, uh, there's no one sector that dominates the rest of them. Uh, we almost have uh, a fair share of uh, sectors comprising each cohort, from business support services, which is the largest one, to consumer markets uh, and FMCGs, manufacturing and operations and industrial companies, telecoms, not-for-profit organizations, real estate and construction, financial services uh, group, public sector, and healthcare. 97 of the candidates are funded through the apprenticeship levy, and the size and the structure of uh, the cohort is, on average, 65% small to mid-sized organizations, 35% employers of 1,000 or more employees, and uh, in addition to that, we have 19 uh, uh, people coming from uh, FTSE 100 companies and 18 FTSE 250 companies. Usually, the average age would be 37 years uh, of age, but the range uh, is between 23 and 65. Obviously, the uh, extremes are something that uh, we need to discuss and we need to be quite sure of the applicant before entering this uh, specific program in this uh, specific cohort and we post uh, 56 different nationalities uh, getting into uh, its class each year now why currently we do have a unique alumni network and i think that this is one of the most important things that you will enjoy uh, learning with us the network is quite extended in a number of uh, businesses and throughout uh, not only the UK, but also beyond. And uh, the way that we are setting this uh, program up uh, in coming in uh, for three days every month and learning and sort of disconnecting from uh, the rest of uh, the issues and the activities that you have enables you to not only learn better, but to exchange uh, ideas and experiences with your fellow uh, cohort and also at the same time bond better with uh, the, your fellow uh, classmates. Uh, we do have a, a very unique uh, campus. Uh, I don't know if you've uh, heard so far that we do own our own airport and we do own our own airplanes and by the way we have developed the first automated air traffic management uh, control tower, which is something that you will experience along other stuff like additive manufacturing and 3D printing uh, and new technologies and disruptive technologies that we are working on. We do have on-campus accommodation, so you don't need to be concerned about where you will stay during your residential. We do have uh, allocated uh, rooms uh, reserved for and during the classes. And as I said, the campus, the environment, the people around here, uh, the lecturers support close working relationships between uh, every one of you. With that in mind, if you have any questions, please do feel free to share them with us. Any questions, please do type them in. Yes. So the first question is, what's the difference between the self-funded MBA, EMBA, and the SLA plus? In terms of learning, there is no difference at all. Why? Because we have mapped the executive MBA uh, towards the uh, SLA. In terms of uh, regulations now, there is a, a different process that you need to apply through. And my colleagues from the admissions, will, they will send you a number of uh, forms that you and your employer will need to uh, fill in and submit. Uh, in terms of the learning journey, as I said, the, there's not 
huge difference. The only tangible uh, big difference that uh, you will have is that if you are an SLA student, you will have to go through the endpoint assessment gateway, as this is called. Uh, we usually work with uh, CMI and ILS, uh, I, sorry, ILD in this Institute of Leadership Development. And in this, you will have to develop a personal portfolio of evidence that you will submit through the gateway and you will be interviewed on that. Other than that, there's not uh, much difference. Another interesting question, are there any circumstances where I wouldn't be eligible for apprenticeship funding? This is something that you need to discuss with your employer. So it's not you being eligible for funding, it's your employer being eligible for funding. Uh, my colleagues, uh, Jen and Helen, are more than uh, happy to take on offline any question. And actually, during the, uh, admiss the uh, application process, the uh, forms that you will be sharing uh, will be monitored by my colleagues in order to assess and understand whether there is eligibility into uh, being funded through the SLA scheme. What if you have an MSc already? Now, that's a tricky question. If you're talking about an MSc and whether you are eligible for the SLA funding, then we will have to assess uh, in our admission support uh, whether this MSc has elements that are already covered by the SLA. This is another process that we usually take offline on a case-by-case -case basis. So uh, we'll have to discuss it thoroughly with you. If you are on the self-funded uh, pathway of uh, the program, then it uh, depends on what you want to achieve through this uh, MBA. Usually, the MSc is uh, focusing a lot more in developing specific skills, whereas the MBA, uh, and particularly our executive MBA program, is focusing in developing you as a leader and uh, trying to boost your career into a senior leadership trajectory. Can you tell us a bit more about the international element? Yes, uh, that's a very nice question. We are actually redesigning it. And uh, from next year, what we will be offering is a uh, two-fold uh, activity. So you will be able to select one of the two. Uh, the uh, one activity that you will be able to select from is uh, going abroad in one of the partner institutions uh, that we have. We are part of a consortium called the MBA Consortium. Uh, a number of uh, universities uh, from overseas, uh, US, Latin America, uh, Europe, and so on, uh, are forming this consortium. And students take the opportunity from each university to travel to another university where you will be getting a module there along with uh, some hands-on experience uh, on the local market. The, next, the other option will be a uh, module being taken here in Cranfield, where you will be exposing yourselves to uh, international businesses, international cultures, and so on. This is something that we are currently uh, designing and we will be able to offer it from uh, the September 23 intake. So what does a typical teaching block at Cranfield look like? As I said, during your uh, studies here, uh, uh, during those 28 months, every month you will be coming in for three days, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. In those three days, usually we have two modules being taught in blocks. Uh, and this is a, a, about 50% of each module being taught on those uh, three days. And we do this in order not to uh, uh, 
confuse or uh, make it too strenuous for someone to participate. So you will be uh, getting those uh, two monsoons during your stay with us, with your residential with us. Uh, you will be discussing a, a lot about uh, cases that we are uh, giving and uh, you will be sharing your experiences during those uh, three days. In addition, you will have time to uh, start your assignments that you will be given and uh, be able to work with the rest of your classmates, either uh, in uh, all of the classmates or within your learning groups. Another thing that uh, we are uh, pioneering in here is that we have uh, we are setting up uh, learning groups from the very beginning. So we handpicked students for each learning group so that not only they get support, not only they get the soundboarding exercise with the rest of the uh, fellow students, but also uh, try to uh, develop together the assignments and the group work that they are required to and submit it. How much work is there in between the teaching blocks? This uh, depends on the module, uh, on each module itself. Usually we have 10 credit modules, which uh, requires you to study for about 100 hours. Everything uh, and all of this information is with each module descriptor. So once uh, you get admitted, uh, you will get all that information uh, in advance, quite in advance. So you will be getting uh, lectures uh, and you will be required beyond the lectures to read on your own and also uh, to uh, develop the assignments uh, with your learning team or individual assignments uh, depending on the module itself and submit it. So all in all, this is about 100 hours each module. Uh, this is the uh, average uh, that we see and we, uh, we know across uh, all UK universities. So start dates, we have two start dates, one is in September and one in March. Uh, we are actually closing down the application uh, period now for the March 23 intake. So in case you are interested, I would definitely advise you to get in touch with uh, the admissions team and submit your uh, application, especially if you are considering uh, the SLA uh, funding, you need to do that uh, as a matter of urgency uh, if you want that is to get on the March uh, intake, uh, because uh, there is a uh, an administrative process working in the background to uh, uh, assess your eligibility, uh, to do all forms and complete them in a timely manner. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yes, could you talk about some of the scholarships that are available for the self-funded route and how to apply? Great question. During your uh, application process, uh, one section of your application actually asks you if you want to apply for any of the scholarships that we have. In order to apply for a scholarship, uh, you need to uh, submit a uh, letter uh, detailing why you think you are eligible for this uh, particular scholarship. Uh, in terms of scholarships, uh, we do have a number of uh, them. Uh, we have a uh, an excellence scholarship, so things that you have done in your past that you think you uh, are great and you should be put across for scholarship, and obviously things that you are proud of, both in your previous uh, education and uh, also in your business context. Uh, we also have a uh, Women in Leadership Scholarship and an EDI scholarship. So Women in Leadership and uh, uh, Equity Diversification uh, scholarships are uh, there for you to choose from. 
uh, and the scholarships uh, usually are up to 6,500 uh, pounds each for that. Uh, these are the scholarships that we currently have. We are uh, reassessing it that in the next uh, few months, we will also introduce a few more uh, scholarships for you. So stay tuned. An interesting question now. I don't have a degree. Does that mean I am ineligible to apply and would I struggle uh, on the program? Not having a degree for the executive MBA program in particular doesn't mean that you are ineligible. We try to assess the broader professional career that someone has, as well as the uh, trainings and the development that uh, the applicant has gone through within the companies that uh, they have worked in. So a degree, no matter what the degree is, doesn't really make you ineligible to apply. It will be working with you on a case by case uh, basis to identify those elements over there. Uh, would I struggle to the program? That's another uh, difficult question to apply uh, as such. What do I say so? The way that we have structured the program is actually enabling and helping you in your uh, professional career development and getting on the trajectory that you want to get. It all depends at the end of the day how much time you want to invest in uh, studying with us or with uh, any uh, program that is. Uh, and why do I say that? The uh, modules that we have set has uh, a number of uh, preset or pre-identified uh, issues that you should be familiar with. If you're not familiar with, we're more than happy to help you and support you in getting yourself familiarized with those uh, items. But this goes back, as I said, to uh, you and whether you are committed to invest this time. With this in mind, just to reassure you, we have had some exceptional students in the past, and actually in the cohorts up to the previous one, who didn't have a degree, and they went on investing in their careers and uh, in themselves, and invested the time that they needed in order to upskill themselves and get on the same page as the rest of the cohort. Would I have access to the career development service? Well, that's a great one. And that's a great one because uh, not only do we have uh, one of the best career services out there, it's actually you have access 24 seven or almost 24 seven to them. But in addition to that, it's not only the career services that we uh, give you access to, it's the network that you will be having within your class and within your cohort with the previous cohorts with the alumni and actually with all of us academic staff there. Uh, most of us are uh, practitioners and we are currently practitioners and we are quite close with companies. So whenever you have any question, any issue, uh, we are more than happy, all of us, career services, lecturers and so on, to get uh, in touch with us and sit down and discuss and grab a coffee. And actually this goes back to the residentials that we are having and we are uh, firm about that. When you're coming here, it's easier to have this sort of conversations with every one of us and get the support that you need. Our idea, our intention is actually exactly that, help you with your career trajectory. And this is why we are also investing on you during this period that you could be with us. How involved are alumni at Cranfield? I would say they are quite involved. Actually, uh, we have, and uh, I don't know if uh, Dr. Hassel uh, spoke about that, uh, we are organizing and she's organizing a speaker series 
So every week, every other week, we have uh, an alumnus or an alumna coming in and talking about their, their experience, uh, talking about what they are doing right now, and uh, actually discussing and getting together with uh, the students. Uh, we have a number of uh, events that we are also organizing where alumni ca comes back uh, and uh, shares experiences, uh, information, and so on and so forth. But predominantly, the alumni network is there for you to uh, use it appropriately and as much as you uh, want. How are students supported throughout the program, both as an apprentice and self-funded? Just to make it clear, we don't make any distinction whether a student is a, an apprentice or a self-funded student. The same support, the same engagement, the same everything uh, gets uh, on with uh, every student that comes into our program, gets admitted to our program. Now, the support comes in a number of elements. As I said, you are assigned to a learning group. So this is a useful and quite more useful than a lot of people think uh, resource that you have. At the same time, we have a number of uh, different units in, in the uh, university and the school in particular who can help you. For example, we have a library uh, who is working literally 24 seven uh, to support you. So whenever you want a specific uh, paper or you don't know what you really look for and you want some support from an academic librarian uh, they are uh, standby to help you with that in addition to that all lecturers are uh, operating an open door policy so whenever you have any issue whatsoever you just uh, arrange a meeting or an e-meeting with uh, the lecturer to get down and discuss any issue that you may have as I said, our main and primary objective is to help you with your career trajectory and to take no shortcuts in that. Whatever the uh, question is, you are more than welcome to come in, talk to any of us, any of my colleagues, and get the support that you need. And also beyond, obviously, uh, even when you uh, graduate. So, are there options to catch up on modules where they have been missed for illness or exceptional circumstances? Yes, there are. Usually, we record every lecture that we are having, and this is available uh, for everyone who has missed it. Now, what do I mean everyone who has missed it? We are quite firm in you joining us throughout the residential. Uh, and uh, enjoying the uh, teaching and the learning experience here in Cranfield. However, we do understand at the same time that life gets through, you may get done with uh, illness or you may have uh, other important uh, uh, issues with your company. For example, we were discussing, I was discussing last week with a few uh, students uh, about a, a mission that the company was asking them to be in and they couldn't participate in the uh, lectures, you will be able to use them as long as you are not uh, uh, doing this predominantly. That is, you're not covering the entire module uh, through on the online uh, recordings that we have. Well, that's a good one. Do you have to stay on campus for the three days? What are the benefits? You don't have to stay on campus. Uh, people that are living nearby, they choose to live uh, in their premises, in their houses, and uh, instead uh, commute to the campus uh, for their learning. Staying on campus, the benefit is that you stay with your fellow students, uh, you connect with them and at the same time you disconnect for the from the rest of the issues that may be uh, bugging you or stressing you. The way uh, we are doing this or the reason that we are doing this is purely for your convenience. Come here, spend three days on campus, 
and finish off as much learning as possible. So the only reason is uh, to improve your learning experience. If you don't want to uh, do that, by all means, you can commute. And there are a number of uh, students of ours that are choosing to commute, and mainly because they are uh, living nearby. What is a typical cohort size? What does it look like, gender, seniority? So as I said, a typical cohort size, uh, the average uh, student would be around 37 uh, years of age. Uh, in terms of gender, uh, we are trying to be a uh, balanced 50-50 gender uh, split uh, there. Uh, just to give you an idea, the September intake was 55-45. Uh, percentage points in terms of gender, male to female. Uh, in terms of seniority, we have uh, people from uh, middle level managers uh, upwards. So you will see everyone uh, who is aspiring to become, and this is again our intention, uh, aspiring to become uh, a senior uh, person in their companies or a uh, board uh, or to get a board level position or a C level position being into the cohort uh, with five years uh, the bare minimum being five years of experience it means that you have to be at least a middle level manager in order to be admitted uh, in this program uh, we do not admit uh, people that are juniors uh, and we usually ask them to apply for another of the uh, programs that uh, the university is offering So what are some of the common pitfalls that past students have experienced in the past and what support has been available? Uh, I don't think that uh, it's pitfalls uh, per se. Uh, I would say it's uh, uh, the planning that is actually uh, would or could have been better. Uh, for example, there are students that are um, uh, having to uh, go on a mission, for example, as I said, with their companies, and they cannot really uh, attend the module, an entire module, that is. In this case, uh, what uh, support we are offering them, obviously, they cannot follow the entire module and they will have to defer it for the next cohort. The way that we have structured the program uh, enables students to uh, get on the next uh, intake and uh, go through that module so that uh, they uh, don't lose two months uh, on their learning. Uh, in terms of the support, we have a uh, broad administrative uh, team helping you with uh, uh, the learning schedule, uh, with the communi communications, and uh, also the academic personnel at the same time helping you uh, in getting through these uh, issues. What I said before, uh, this program and the way that we have uh, uh, developed this program and the way that we are approaching this program is all about you, is uh, all about uh, getting on the trajectory and helping you from our side to get on that career trajectory that you really wish to. Any other questions? I can't see any other questions. If you have any other questions, oh, what would happen if I left my organization part way through my studies? Uh, that's a good one, because this usually happens. As I said, uh, life gets into our way of uh, planning. So it all depends uh, what happens next. So if you get 
into another organization, then uh, the best uh, approach would be to ask them if they would be willing to uh, continue funding your studies and or if they are a part of the senior leader, uh, uh, sorry, if they are uh, eligible for the levy, for the senior leader apprenticeship levy uh, and uh, continue supporting you through that. If not, we have uh, a number of uh, support mechanisms uh, within to help you uh, through your studies, supporting you through your studies and also helping you uh, with the finances uh, that might uh, become uh, requested. Any other questions? What documents do I need to submit to support my application? I, I would uh, leave this question with the uh, admissions team. So Ellen Knight and uh, Jen Whale, uh, who are responsible for that, you can get in contact with them to uh, uh, request the schedule of uh, materials and evidence that you need to submit as part of your application. It's not that long. Uh, but you uh, should come uh, up and uh, submit a number of uh, uh, components, a number of evidences and a number of documentation as part of your application. Okay then, so that's great. Uh, I think we got there. If you have any other questions, please do feel free uh, to get in touch uh, with us, with uh, my colleagues and even with myself. I'm more than happy to help you with any question or any, any additional question you may have. Uh, this has been a great uh, session. I do thank you for your time and keep in touch and looking forward to uh, seeing you and uh, going through your application for the executive MBA program. Thank you so much.